1% or less actually make financial independence. So that means 99% of the people are living in a delusion. And if you ask them, what are they going to do if I gave them $10 million, what would they do with their life? I guarantee you, two to eight million of that will be spent in less than a minute. Motivation is not a solution, it's a symptom. Well, I think that the first step is to dissolve your own shames and guilts and reasons why you don't deserve. Because a lot of people are sitting there beating themselves up. Anytime you set goals that are not aligned with your highest values and you then don't achieve because you give up on them, then you end up beating yourself up and think there's something wrong with you. Well, first of all, you want to find out whatever you've done in your life, how it served you, how it served others, and clear out any shame and guilt. Then you want to sit down and, and ask, what is it that you're really going to do? Because you're not going to get wealthy unless you're serving people. And if you're not dedicated to serving people, you have a fantasy called wealth. You need to make sure that you really have a value on serving people. You need to have a value on wealth, because if you don't really have a value on wealth, you'll spend it. If you have more of a value on spending it than saving it and investing it, it's going to keep going out the window. Because the money circulates through the economy from those who value it least to those who value it most over time. So you have to value wealth building more than spending. You have to value serving people more than just taking. And you have to be able to, to uh, be dedicated to something that's really congruent with your values or you won't stay with it. You won't build momentum and perseverance towards the accomplishment. And people who have a forced automatic savings in place and are willing to consistently study and research because they value wealth building, uh, Warren Buffett spent, uh, was by the time he was 11, he already read all the books in the Omaha, Nebraska library on wealth building by the age of 11. He was committed to the outcome. People are really committed to wealth building. They study it, they research it, they mentor under it, they apply it, they have forced savings and investment structures in place. They constantly are trying to serve people and they want to build a business that lasts. What happens is every human being lives by a set of priorities, a set of values, things that are most important to least important in their life. Whenever they set goals that are congruent and aligned with their highest values, they become the most powerful and effective people they can be. This is when they're the most grateful, the most resilient. This is when they're most disciplined and most fulfilled in their life. Whenever they're living by lower values and trying to inject the values of others or minimize uh, themselves and live by lower value systems, they procrastinate, hesitate, frustrate, and they become, you might say, victims of their history, not masters of their destiny. So you look at how people fill their space. You look at how they spend their time. You look at what they are disciplined about and focused on. You look at where they're most organized. You look at where they spend the most money. You look at what energizes them the most. You look at what they think about, visualize, affirm, and converse with others about most that is, is in line with what they're creating in life. Look at what they're inspired by, what their goals are, and what they love learning. If you look and find the common threads to those questions, it'll narrow down to what you're dedicated to and what you spontaneously can't wait to get up in the morning and do. Any individual that is setting goals, intentions, that are congruent and aligned with the highest values, they have the highest probability of being spontaneously inspired in the morning to get up and do it. So if you have an entrepreneur um, that's working in a business and they found what is most meaningful to them, they have found uh, the tap dance to work energy that Warren Buffett describes. Now, in addition to that, an entrepreneur also has to find out what their targeted market's highest values are to make sure that they're providing a service that meets those specific needs. So determining your own values and determining other people's values that you want to serve uh, is an essential component because you're here to be able to find something that serves other people, but it's also meaningful to you. If you find those two, you've got your niche. Now you've got exactly what you would love to get up in the morning and do, and you get, a, you get to go and do what exactly people want and you get to fulfill their life. Because everybody has a set of priorities, a set of values in their life, whenever they're living by their highest value, which the ancient Greeks called the telos, which is the highest priority in their life, the chief aim as Napoleon Hill called it, or the Ed Ellison called it the magnificent obsession, or the big why, that highest value uh, is, is the most meaningful and most purposeful thing they can do. That is the purpose. When you do, you're most resilient, most adaptable to pain and pleasure. When you go down the list of values to lower values, um, you're less inspired, less fulfilled by doing them. You procrastinate in doing them. And what happens is you'll only do them if it's pleasurable, and if it's not, you'll give up. So it's a key is to make sure that everything you do is, is highest priority, the thing that's most meaningful to you, so you don't give up, you have the resilience, and you embrace pain and pleasure in the pursuit of a great purpose. If you are not living by your highest values because you're wanting to do it with pleasure only and you'll want to give up if it's pain, uh, you'll need motivation all the time. The difference between inspiration, which is from within, 
is people who are inspired from within are living by their highest values. And people that need motivation from without are people that haven't found that highest value and are living by lower values. And they need constant incentives and motivation and only pleasure to keep them going. So our animal nature needs motivation. But our truest nature, our human nature, the one that activates the, the telencephalon in the brain, the executive centers of the brain, which allows you to be an executive and a leader in the world, uh, transcends this pain, pleasure, amygdala reaction of the lower animal within us and allows us to function from an inner core mission that transcends that and allows us to be able to embrace pain, pleasure, support, challenge, ease, difficulties, any complementary pair of opposites that you face along the way, you turn into on the way. If you're expecting to float across the, the, between two buildings, uh, that's unrealistic expectation. Or if you're expecting yourself to do something that's truly not high on your values and not meaningful to you, you'll tend to give up. Uh, or expecting some other human being to do something that doesn't abide by the laws of the universe. Or expecting them to live outside their values. Because every human being makes decisions according to what will give them the greatest advantage over disadvantage, greatest reward over risk to their highest values. So if you expect yourself to do something that's not really meaningful to you, it sounds like a neat whim, but it's not really you, you're going to end up self-defeating and end up with the A, B, C, Ds of negativity. Internal anger and aggression, internal blame and feelings of betrayal, internal criticism and challenge, internal despondency, despair and depression. And these A, B, C, Ds of negativity that you internally have, which some people call negative self-talk and negative self-behavior, is actually a feedback mechanism to make sure we're setting realistic expectations that are aligned with our real values. And we know that it's real if we can see it in our mind's eye, we see the strategy, we know the action steps, and it's obtainable. Now those are the keys. When you do, you have a realistic expectation, you keep showing effort and evidence of manifesting what you want to manifest. The wisest thing to do is start with simple goals that you achieve and train yourself to do what you say. If you train yourself to do what you say, your piggy banks become biggie banks. Your little action steps become big dreams. And if you live congruently with your highest values, you have the highest probability of achievement and you won't give up on your goals. So if you set goals that are congruent, that are truly meaningful to you, and you start chunking them down into small enough bites, so you just keep doing things and keep rewarding yourself by accomplishing immediate steps, you'll end up manifesting things because you just strategize your way into the bigger game. So I always say that if you chunk the big project down into small bites and then down to everything that's within a time horizon and within your vision to see and do, you'll get it. You just stay with it long enough. If you stay perseverant towards an objective and exemplify action every day towards your objective, sooner or later everybody else kind of dies out and you're at the top. You just got to stay with it. Procrastination is a result of three primary things. It's an unclear vision. It is an unchunked vision. That means you're taking on too big a chunk without bringing it down to small enough bites that you can go and get it done. Uh, and it's not linked to your highest values. If you take the, the objective that you have, you make sure it is abide by the laws of the universe, it's doable. Um, you make sure it really matches your highest values so it's linked. And the way you know that is if you can rattle off the reasons why you can do it and how it will help you fulfill your mission fluently. But if you're fluent, you're congruent. Then you basically make sure it's chunked down into small action steps you can do and you micromanage until you prove it you can macromanage. That means you do it into small baby steps every single day. This, if I do this, I'm one step closer. If I do this the next day, I do it one step closer. Break it down into such small steps that it's a, by the inch it's a cinch. If you do, you won't procrastinate. Procrastinate means that you've unchunked it, unlinked it, and unclarified it. I think that people who think they're gonna be positive all the time are delusioned. Just like a magnet, it has two sides, and you have two sides. And the more you set up a fantasy that has only one side, the more you get depressed when it doesn't match your fantasy. So I'm a realistic guy that sets real goals in real time uh, with a balanced orientation, and I accomplish more by doing that than setting up fantasies and then having nightmares. The principle behind the law of attraction is not really metaphysical as some would like to propose. If you're a woman and you're dedicated to children and you have three beautiful children and you walk in a mall, you're gonna notice things related to children. You're not gonna notice business materials. But if you're an entrepreneur and you're walking in a mall, you're gonna notice business things. You're not gonna notice children's things. So that means that whatever's most important to you, whatever's highest on your value, whatever your real purpose and most inspiration is, you're going to filter out of your reality. You're going to see opportunities. You're going to make decisions quicker because you got more awareness. And you're going to stick to them with more perseverance in that area. And you're going to see more synchronicities. So a lot of the secret is simply those things that occur spontaneously when you're congruent with your highest values. So if a person will set goals that are congruent and aligned and chunk them down and follow those actions and prioritize it and delegate that, they have amazing synchronicities and their vision and their affirmations and their things become congruent and, and in that congruency they create their reality. 
So I'm a believer that it's not as much metaphysical as it is axiological. It is based on human value systems.